convergent evolution is the the you know the evolution of the similar features in unrelated lineages uh, the relationship in biology means genealogical relationship no the relationship because of the shared ancestry right other like look like two of your friends looks quite similar are they related no right morphological simple morphological similarity you cannot call it as a relationship you know so that's the same thing like for example a, a mosquito and a, a crow a parrot they you know of course you can someone can say that an outsider who don't know anything about the evolution can say okay these two might be related because they both can fly they both have got wings but strictly speaking the insects wings are appendages right if you look closely the anatomy then these are completely different these are not homologous these are called analogous structures yes convergent evolution result to analogous structure not homologous structure homologous structures are because of the uh, you know divergent evolution right they, these two are very different this so the convergent evolution is spurious evolution artificial these are not real evolution you know so biologically and evolutionally they are quite different structurally also different right another example is bats wings of bats and wings of birds so wings of bats bat you know it is a mammal right so it is a it's basically a vertebrate and these are nothing but four limbs you know so these are limbs these are not exactly like uh, the birds uh, uh, you know the the wings although the the function is same locomotion that is you know to fly isn't it but they are really structurally different so these are analog structure because of the convergent evolution so uh, these are called analogous or homoplastic when it comes with dna sequences these sequences are known as homoplastic so this is going to be a major problem uh, if you are involving this homoplastic sequences your tree is become unreliable you know so yes yeah, so in phylogeny you should not include any homoplastic sequences you know that is really going to be a major problem in it so homoplastic characters are shared by two unrelated groups but not their common ancestor you know that is the idea so groups that based on uh, defined based on the analogy is known as paraphyletic group not homo uh, you know monophyletic group so uh, you know, or homologous structures isn't it these are analogous structure and based on analogous structure or homoplastic sequence if you define a group it's called paraphyletic group one example would be like here you can see in this uh, diagram uh, you know so uh, you are just all this animal let us say ants mosquito snake pigeon bat and human very very different animal right and uh, someone call okay all these are the animals with leg you know only one exception snake doesn't have leg so if you're grouping into two buckets and you're putting snake in one bucket all the rest in another bucket and not, uh, calling it as a legged animal and non-legged animal that is a, a, a fallacious way to classify it isn't it a better way is uh, you're defining based on the natural uh, features that is uh, you know th these are known as uh, uh, you know the homologous characters for example presence of six leg all insects have right so ants and mosquito now this snakes and pigeon opening in the sides of the skull behind the eye so that's a character for this uh, you know sauropsida right so sauropsid snakes and pigeon and bat and human of mammal because there is a mammary gland a shared derived feature so that is why these are monophyletic clades this is also monophyletic and all together this is also a monophyletic clade this is a monophyletic clade but uh, this shaded area is uh, you know not a monophyletic it's a par paraphyletic clade or polyphyletic clade right so homoplasy you can see another example of homoplasy is that uh, you can see all these are bat you know bat pigeon and mosquito with wings ants and human with legs snakes with no limbs so this is a polyphyletic group right at the same time these two are insect these two are sauropsi these two are mammals so this is monophyletic group this is the real phylogeny right homoplasy is going to be a problem in phylogenetic assessment so there is a term called apomorphy and plesiomorphy what is the difference here apomorphy means specialized or derived or changed character states right these are also called evolutionary innovations 
these are known as apomorphy when this character evolves through multiple lineages that all descendants of the common ancestor share it these are known as sin apomorphy so basically these are uh, derived character not ancestral but derived innovation this lights up the clades you know apomorphy and sin apomorphy the groups defined based on sin apomorphic character is known as monophyletic clade the same clade which we introduced earlier so monophyletic clades are the clades that are defined based on sin apomorphic character you know apomorphic character you can say but sin apomorphy means kind of an apomorphy but shared by all the descendants you know derived character like mammary gland is shared by every single descendant of the mammalian lineage isn't it so that is why it's a synapomorphic trait right so polyphyletic character and monophyletic as we saw that monophyly is defined because of the synapomorphy you know so and now uh apomorphy i told you it's a derived while plesiomorphy is going to be a problem plesiomorphy is ancestral so ancestral original primitive character state is called plesiomorphy not reliable you know uh, apomorphy is better than plesiomorphy so plesiomorphy uh, when this uh, character evolves through multiple lineages and some descendants share it it's called sim plesiomorphy like synapomorphy only some individuals have it not all right so groups defined based on sim plesiomorphic character is known as paraphyletic clades you know or paraphyletic groups again not natural one example would be reptiles early textbooks in zoology we can see this term reptilia right so reptilia is uh, you know or the ancestor with all the descendant except some so there are exceptions you need to cut out these exceptions like mammal and apes uh, and then you're defining the, uh, you're defining this group as paraphyletic which is incorrect you know why you need to remove this mammal and apes from this group they are also part of this entire group if you are talking about nature right so it's like same parent some of the kids you are re removing and other uh, siblings you are forming a group you know that is uh, different right that is wrong you know that is uh, but that is what your paraphyletic groups are so old taxonomy did contain several of the paraphyletic groups that are now being gone defunct in the latest taxonomy which is based on uh, you know phylogeny phylogenetic systematics you know so this one diagram will show you all monophyly paraphyly and polyphyly this is a monophyly simile for me right human apes old world monkeys and new world monkeys all together had one common ancestor and all the descendants right now a group which is uh, you know which is basically uh, highlighted in blue color so this group is known as a prosimi right so prosimi is uh, all this group lorisa star tarsier and lemur right except this so why not why didn't you add this also of course there is also a descendant of this ancestor but you are excluding it to define a separate entity which is wrong which is called paraphyly i hope it's clear now completely different two things you are making a group like uh, you know animals with leg you're grouping everything except snake you know so that is something called polyphyly real extreme like lorises and tarsier because these two are really small monkey <laughs> if you've seen it in philippines uh, you know tarsiers are really cute please check out it's a figure very very nice looking monkey so small monkeys together here <laughs> you're just making one group and you're defining it okay this is a small monkey let me name it as a, a new new form of monkey then it's completely wrong right so that is called polyphyletic group now if you are simply putting lorises and tarsiers together without any of it, neither their ancestor nor other descendants so that that kind of group is known as polyphyletic group so polyphyly and paraphyly both are wrong only mon monophyly is correct so in certain textbook you will not even see paraphyly and polyphyly instead you will see non monophyly which is also accurate so monophyly versus non monophyly because only monophyly is now taken as natural group right you know one common ancestor and all the descendants and the entire group is monophyletic no problem lorisers tarsiers limer all these uh, you know uh, simile forms 
everything together is one monophyletic group or clade i can cut it with just one cut so that is one way if you think of this phylogenetic tree made up of uh, like a, you know like a metal uh, you know metal uh, what do you call the uh, uh, strings so this you can actually cut out this monophyly just one cut you can take out but for paraphyly and polyphyly you need at least two cuts for example this group this is a paraphyletic group you need to, to cut here one cut second cut is here so you need two cut in the case of polyphyly this red group again you need one cut here another cut here you need at least two cuts but for monophyletic group for this group you just need one cut this is also monophyletic group just one cut you know and this is also a monophyletic group just one cut i hope it's clear to you